Okay, this is an example using the quick alloy, desoldering alloy with the quick alloy desoldering alloy paste flux. Okay, so today I'm gonna desolder this um, used USB connector off on this used USB connector board. So first you apply some quick alloy flux, set on cyber.lc.com onto the location you want to solder and then you heat out your soldering iron to above 300 degrees celsius and you get some of your quick alloy uh, desoldering alloy handy here uh, also you can purchase this the tainer from quick alloy sorry tainer for lc.com it has a solder paste built in, left free solder paste built into the copper mesh. And you can rejuvenate your tip every time you solder, see like it's very shiny. So basically you tin the tip. Okay, so now we're ready. The temperature is about 300 degrees Celsius. You heat up first the component you want to solder. The solder, and then you apply some of the solder from cyberdialc.com onto the location. Basically, what you're doing here is you mix with the extremely low melting temperature uh, desoldering alloy with the board alloy with flux assist. Then what you get is you're gonna get a combination of uh, both, hence you have a much lower melting temperature. Then once you've done that, you just need to make sure all joints stay molten and then just press down on the part that you want to take out. In this case, this USB connector. See, you can already see it's being wiggled. Um, I'm not having a little bit of difficulty with this because um, this connector had a Oh, there we go. It has a little angle, it lock onto the board, but once you wiggle to the right angle, then you can remove it easily without worrying about the solder. Um, here. Okay, so that, that was pretty easy. It took me, if I'm doing this without recording, it will probably take you like less than a minute to do this with everything ready. 30 seconds maybe. Okay, um, so that's it. This is the USB connector. It's perfectly functional and it's good. So I can reuse this in my other motherboard or um, laptop repair. So that's good. And I'm gonna do one more time so you can see what's going on. Okay. So zooming a little bit more. Let's see better. Okay, so I didn't do this, but you, what you want to do is see this dust on the board. You want to clean this board before you do any repair or just have harvesting parts. What you could do is you could put some alcohol on it and just wash it off. Okay, so let me repeat the same process again. Let me do it on this side so we can see it better. See this this connector over here? So this is what I'm going to be started. Again, repeat the process, you apply some of the um, quick gallop, well, cyber dock flux. So this flux is no clean. This flux is also really good for BGA with bowl. Um, it's relatively liquidy, but it doesn't run all over the board. And it's pretty cheap. We have a very good price at cyberdockalc.com for soldering supplies, especially for flux. Um, Okay, so it works really well. You can see the alloy and the flux help the desoldering process very easily. And I'm gonna do this. You just wanna make sure every single lid is being melted. And then mix with the alloy. 
Um, the alloy is, is reusable if you really want to. Um, it's hard to harvest it, but it's possible it can be done. So once you do that, you just push the parts down. This, this is like probably a good thing to do for for this thing like the harvest of the part would be like use like maybe a vise or something to clamp down the part. So those way you can only you only have to pull pressure on the board and just come off. It's hard to use. Put your tweezer in and separating. Um, let me get the angle right. Separating the parts. Right. You get one side off first. So you can push it. Just push it through. And make sure these four lids are molten. And push on the other side. There we go. And again, final one touch, just make sure everything is molten and just push. Push the top. There we go. Like I said, there's a little funny kink angle on the part. Uh, on this, when they put onto the board, so it's not so much as the solder is preventing the soldering, it's really the, this little angle, the metal itself is like a clip, clipping onto the board. Anyways, so what you can do afterwards is you want to clean off the alloy, because right now it's kind of like a big blob onto the connector. Then all you need to do is just make it hot again, and while it's still wet, shake it, and it will come right off. There we go. See? It just fly out over there. That's the way the alloy used to be. And then just do a little final cleaning. Apply a little bit of flux so the alloy will flow better. There we go. And clean off the recipes. Okay, so that's it. You successfully solder off the USB connector. To solder anything back, all you need to do is do the same thing. Use the alloy and push it back to the holes while it's still hot. Uh, I also just need to do hot air to molten the, all the holes instead of using soldering iron. Because soldering iron can, if the hole is really small, it can potentially damage, damage the... Um, the soldering pads. So using hot air, apply to this area, keep it at about 200 degrees Celsius. Then with the alloy, uh, the cyberduct alloy, the soldering alloy, and then you just push this through the hole as the alloy molten in these conductors. Okay, thank you for watching. Oh, a quick note. Um, we sell two kind of alloy. One is lead, leaded, which is the one I use here, and also lead free. Uh, the way you need to tell if it's lead or lead free, they look identical in size and color. The lead free one is more resistant to tensile strength. And the leather one is more brittle, so it breaks more easily. Um, it's up to your preference, like lead is not, not exactly healthy for you, like it's a neurotoxin. So the leather one breaks off pretty easily, you just bend it and it breaks right off. The lead free one, you can bend it into a certain shape before it breaks. Um, I prefer the leather one because it's um, it, it melts at lower temperature, but in reality, it depends what you do. Like, actually, to be honest, I don't really have a presence. Um, the leather one, 
it, it, okay, so forget the preference. Um, the leather one melts at a lower temperature, and it, it they differ by few degrees. The lead, the lead free one, however, it's safe and it does not lead. Lead is a neurotoxin. Once it gets in your body stream, it absorbs. Um, it absorbs best through mucosal membrane. It's like if you ingest it into your mouth or you, um, let's say if you're boiling lead and you vaporize lead into the air, then you breathe it in. So good ventilation is very important. But in self soldering your temperature is not going to go up to 1000 degrees Celsius. 3000 degrees, I think it was 3000 degrees Celsius, that's the vaporization of lead. So as long as you don't make 3000 degrees Celsius, you should be okay with lead soldering. Um, but still, the flux could be a bad thing, so uh, good ventilation is good. Because um, rosin based flux can cause indu asthma. All flux indu asthma, so it doesn't really matter what flux you use. Anyways, um, a little bit tangent, but uh, so the lead free one is for people who doesn't want to work with lead. Like, for example, if you're using lead, don't hold it with your finger. It doesn't, lead doesn't really get absorbed really well through your regular uh, keratin skin, like your fingertip. But it's still, I don't know, like little mi micro, micro, little teeny bit of lead get through your skin and get absorbed into your blood. But if you use left free one, left free alloy, then you don't have that worry because whatever that's in left free, it's so safe to use. You can practically eat eat it out of it. You can make a play with the left free alloy from Cyberdog LC and eat out of it with food without you know getting sick. But leather one, please don't even try. <laughs> um, don't even think about it because that. Also, if you have little children at home, um, let test sweet for some reason. To a human body, it tastes just like it, it processes like a sugar, like a sucrose molecule. And our taste buds will perceive it as sweet. And for little babies and children, they don't understand not to eat lead. They take stuff in from the ground and pick it into their mouth. So you have little babies and children at home that eat things off the ground. Do not use lead free alloy or any kind of solder that has lead in it because that's dangerous for the kid. Um, aside from that, um, it's really a personal preference let it or left free, it's up to you. The left free one's a little bit more expensive because it's harder to manufacture and it's difficult to make. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. Um, but the science of everything is the leather one, the leather al desoldering alloy from CyberDoc. It's much lower temperature and more brittle, which might not be something you want to use if you want to solder component parts back onto the board. So leather solder in that case will be a better choice. It's still, the leather solder is just a little bit higher temperature. Um, it's a mm, little thin bit, but it works just as the same and just as good as desoldering. If you don't Believe me, you can watch my other video making a demonstration or using comparing left free solder and leather solder. Um, it's it's almost the same thing. Like you can tell the difference. The only difference is that you know you can touch it with your hand. But anyways, so this is the video of using CyberDoc um, no cling flux, the desoldering flux and the desoldering CyberDoc alloy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.